I analyzed 100 Mr. Beast thumbnails using data science. I'll show you my insights on how to create better thumbnails to hopefully get more views and likes. Hey everyone, let's jump into it. The credit goes to Nate from the Channel Makers for the inspiration behind this video. He analyzed 200 Mr. Beast thumbnails and recorded data about each thumbnail in a spreadsheet. He then talked about some summary stats about the number of thumbnails for different categories that he created. I decided to take his study one step further and analyze both his thumbnail data with the video metrics to see if there are certain types of thumbnails that consistently outperform in terms of views and likes. So I linked my Medium article down below in the description if you want to check out my insights there in written form. Also, to keep this video a bit more interesting, I decided to keep this video fairly high level. If you're interested in learning more about the technical aspects, let me know down in the comment section and I can make a separate video. Uh, if you're curious to learn about the insights, make sure to hit the like button. With that said, let's get into it. Uh, so the first step I did was I read in the two data files that I worked with. First file was the thumbnail data that Nate recorded. Uh, the second file was uh, the views, likes, and dislikes for each video that I recorded. Uh, then I merged these two data files. Uh, next, I plotted the counts of various metrics to get some summary statistics. Uh, the first plot was the count of number of words. Uh, as we can see from the plot, most of his recent videos use either no words or two words. Uh, this makes sense since the main focus of a thumbnail is something visually appealing or engaging, such as a facial reaction or the environment. Uh, afterwards, I plotted the count of the number of faces. Uh, we can see from this plot that most of his thumbnails with a, with a face include only one face, followed by two faces. Then I plotted the counts of each overall emotion. Uh, so we see that most of his videos have a happy slash excited emotion. Uh, we also see that anger is the emotion least used on his thumbnails. As we'll see later on when I analyzed views, likes, and dislikes for each emotion, there's a reason why he uses a happy slash excited emotion for most of his thumbnails. Uh, finally, I plotted the counts of the primary focus of the thumbnail. Uh, we see here that a person is the most frequent primary focus, and words are the least frequent focus uh, of his most recent thumbnails. As we discussed earlier, it makes sense to focus on something visually appealing in the thumbnail rather than words. Uh, then I plotted video metrics for each emotion. Uh, the first plot is average views per overall emotion. We can see that disgust slash confusion has the highest average views. So even though happy slash excited was the most frequent emotion used in recent thumbnails, it actually had a lower number of average views relative to other emotions. I then plotted average likes per overall emotion. Uh, interestingly, happy slash excited got the most average likes and anger got the least average likes. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that happy slash excited was the emotion used the most, and anger was the emotion used the least in thumbnails. So this insight could either be just from the limited data set that I'm working with, in which case I'll need more data to analyze, or there's a deeper significance from this data analysis. Uh, so to control for the number of views for each emotion, I plotted the ratio of likes to views as a percent for each emotion. As we can see, happy slash excited has the biggest ratio and anger has the lowest ratio. Uh, so then I plotted the average dislikes per overall emotion. Uh, interestingly, neutral slash none had the highest average dislikes, even though it didn't have the corresponding highest average likes. Uh, also, anger still has the least dislikes. So even though videos with an angry or happy slash excited thumbnails uh, have similar average views, happy slash excited gets more engagement in terms of more likes and dislikes. Then I plotted the ratio of like dislikes to views as a percent for each emotion. Uh, as we can see, neutral slash none and happy slash excited have the two biggest ratios and anger and disgust slash confusion have the two lowest ratios. Uh, finally, I plotted the ratio of likes to dislikes as a percent for each emotion. Uh, again, we see that happy slash excited has the highest ratio with the other emotions having fairly similar ratios. Um, so if you're looking to optimize for the number of likes, definitely consider having happy slash excited as the overall emotion for your thumbnail. Uh, next, I've plotted video metrics for each thumbnail focus. Uh, it, uh, so I plotted the average views per primary focus first. Uh, we can see that thumbnails with the environment as the primary focus have the highest average number of views. Uh, also thumbnails with words as a primary focus have the lowest average number of views. I then plotted the average likes per primary focus. Uh, interestingly, we see that thumbnails with words as the primary focus have the highest average number of likes. Also, thumbnails with the environment as a primary focus have the lowest average number of likes. 
This shows the inverse of what we saw uh, when we plotted average views. Then I plotted the ratio of likes to views as a percent for each focus. Uh, so we can see words has the biggest ratio and environment has the lowest ratio. I then plotted the average dislikes per primary focus. Uh, here we can see that thumbnails with items as a primary focus have the highest average number of dislikes compared to when we plotted average likes. Thumbnails with words as the primary focus uh, have the lowest average number of dislikes. Uh, then I plotted the ratio of dislikes to views as a percent for each focus. Uh, so we can see words has the biggest ratio and environment has the lowest ratio. Finally, I plotted the ratio of likes to dislikes as a percent uh, for each focus. Again, we see that words has the highest ratio. Uh, so if you're looking to optimize for the number of likes and limit the number of dislikes, uh, definitely consider having words as a primary focus of your thumbnail. Uh, then I plotted video metrics for each number of faces. Uh, the first plot is uh, the average number of views per number of faces. Uh, we can see that overall thumbnails with less faces have a higher average number of views than with more faces. Uh, I then plotted the average likes per number of faces. Uh, interestingly, we see that thumbnails with nine faces uh, have the highest average number of likes. Uh, well, the only video with nine likes on the thumbnail from my data set was the 2020 YouTube Rewind. Uh, so it makes sense that this video would have the highest average likes since uh, it's the best YouTube Rewind ever. Um, if we take that video away, since it's an outlier in this case, thumbnails with one in seven faces have relatively higher average number of likes. Uh, then I plotted the ratio of likes to views as a percent for each number of faces. Uh, we see the same gen general trend that we saw when we plotted just average likes. Uh, however, we, we see that thumbnails with five and seven faces have greater ratios than thumbnails with one face. Uh, I then plotted the average dislikes per number of faces. Uh, here we can see uh, that thumbnails with seven and nine faces have the highest average uh, number of dislikes. Uh, then I plotted the ratio of dislikes to views as a percent for each number of faces. Uh, we see the same general trend that we saw when we plotted just average dislikes. Uh, one difference is that seven has a marginally greater ratio than nine, even though nine has, a high, has higher average dislikes than seven. Uh, finally, I plotted the ratio of likes to dislikes as a percent for each uh, number of faces. Again, we see that with the exception of nine, the overall trend is that the less faces are on the thumbnail, the higher the ratio. Uh, looking at the data, ideally, there should just be one face. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that the data I worked with didn't observe which face was on each thumbnail. But if there's just one face, presumably it's Mr. Beast's face. Uh, that way, the viewer can quickly recognize the thumbnail is a Mr. Beast video. Uh, then I plotted the video metrics for each number of words. Uh, so the first plot is the average views per number of words. Uh, we can see that with the exception of eight words, the general trend is that the more words are shown in the thumbnail, the lower the average number of views. Um, according to the data set, there's only one video with eight words on the thumbnail, which is when he spent 24 hours straight at Area 51. Uh, Actually, that thumbnail has more than eight words since it shows a warning sign, but I'm just using the data from Nate's video. Uh, also, there's only one video with five words on the thumbnail, uh, which is when he donated uh, $100,000 to Shroud in real life. Since there's only one video for each of these categories, we can think of them as outliers in the data. In any case, the general trend still holds. Uh, I then plotted the average likes per number of faces. Uh, we can see that three has the highest average likes, but with the exception of five, uh, overall the average likes are fairly uniform across the number of words uh, with some relatively marginal differences in average likes. Uh, then I plotted the ratio of likes to views as a percent for each number of words. As we can see, uh, six words has the highest ratio since we saw earlier that average uh, likes was fairly uniform, but six words actually had the least average views. So videos with six words in the thumbnail got the most likes relative to the views, which means there was more engagement uh, in these videos. Uh, so then I plotted the average dislikes per number of words. Uh, we see uh, that five and six have the lowest average dislikes and eight has the highest average uh, dislikes. Uh, but when we plot the ratio of dislikes to views, we see fairly consistent ratios across the board within less than one tenth of 1% 1 difference. Uh, 
So finally, I plotted the ratio of likes to dislikes as a percent for each number of words. Uh, we see that six has the highest ratio with the other numbers having fairly similar ratios and eight with the lowest ratio. So in terms of views, less is more. Uh, in terms of likes and dislikes, it looks like it looks like there are fairly consistent results regardless of the number of words. Uh, so to put everything together, uh, Mr. Beast most commonly uses thumbnails with a couple of words, if any, uh, one face with a happy, excited emotion, and with a person as a primary focus. Uh, to optimize for views, uh, make thumbnails with a couple of words, if any, a face with a disgusted slash confused emotion, and the environment as the primary focus. Uh, one thing to note is that his video where he goes through the same drive through at 100,000 times uh, is one of his highest viewed vi videos from the 100 videos uh, I analyzed. According to the data set, its thumbnail focuses primarily on the environment and has an overall motion of disgust slash confusion, both of which had the highest average views in their respective category. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind about my data analysis, which are that uh, I only used 100 out of 700 or about 14.3% of videos that Mr. Beast has as a, at the time of this recording. Uh, so I only have a relatively small data set that I'm working with, which means as I include more videos in the data set, the insights could change. Uh, luckily, I already created the data analysis process in such a way that I could simply plug in the new data uh, if I were to get a new a larger data set. So that could potentially be for a future follow-up video. Uh, in addition, I didn't take into account if he uploaded certain videos during any particular trends or special events that could potentially garner more views for a particular video. Uh, another thing is that I only took into account the video's thumbnail as the main reason for the video, views and likes. I didn't take into account the video's title, description, tags, and other metadata that could factor into the metrics. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how the metadata could affect these insights, let me know down in the comments below and I can make a follow-up video. Uh, also, these insights may only apply to Mr. Beast's style or niche of videos. So even though his thumbnails work really well for his videos, his style may not necessarily translate well to your videos. So definitely keep iterating and improving upon your own thumbnails and maybe do similar research to see which uh, video or thumbnails do particularly well on your channel. Uh, so I applied some of my insights to my thumbnails on my videos. Uh, to test if my insights actually pan out on YouTube, I created two versions of this video, each with a different thumbnail. I'm curious to know which thumbnail you clicked on and why. Uh, to control for as many variables as I could, the two versions of this video have identical titles and descriptions so that video traffic could come from the thumbnail alone as much as possible. Um, it should be hear your thoughts and thought this could be a fun experiment since I'm a new channel, uh, so I'm relying almost entirely on the YouTube algorithm to recommend my videos. Uh, so I linked the Google form in the description below. Uh, that is an anonymous survey that asks you where, where you find my video, which thumbnail you saw and what you liked slash disliked about the thumbnails. Uh, if you're interested, feel free to check out the Google form and let me know uh, down in the comments section too uh, your thoughts and feedback. Uh, so I hope you found a lot of value from this technical and data-driven approach to understanding thumbnails and learn some insights on how to optimize your thumbnails based on several metrics. Uh, if you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the bell to get notified when my videos get uploaded. Uh, also, be sure to check out my Medium article and Google Form link down below in the description. Uh, and comment down below what you learned from this video and what other topics you want to see. And if you like this video, uh, what other YouTubers I should do. Um, share this video with anyone interested in learning about data science or participating uh, in this experiment. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care.